Hey there, Nick Genetakis here. In this video, let's talk a little bit about Flask Blueprints, specifically how they help you organize and maintain a Flask application of any size. So if you have a very, very small Flask application, Blueprints are awesome. And if you have a very, very large Flask application, Blueprints are even awesomer. And in this video, you know, this is not going to be an end-to-end -end, like follow-along tutorial on using Blueprints from scratch. Instead, this is going to be a video where we take a look at a multi-thousand line Flask application that happens to be using Blueprints, and we're going to be focusing on how it helps us really compartmentalize, compartmentalize, compartmentalize. Jeez, why is my brain trying to think of words I can't even say out loud? Compartmentalize. They help you break shit up. That's what Blueprints do. So let's take a look here at the code base. And uh, the code base that we're looking at is the end result of what we build in my build a SaaS app with Flask course. But uh, you know, since this is a, this is a pre-made application and it does have over 4,000 lines of just Flask code, not counting tests, it is you know a pretty healthy size application. So if you've never heard about this app before, I have talked a little bit about it in previous videos and uh, I will leave a link in the description for a demo video if you really want to learn more about it. But uh, you know, the basic idea is it's a SaaS application. You know, you can wager uh, some amount of coins here. I have 106 coins left. You know, we can try to guess what we think the dice roll is going to be. And when I place the bet here, it rolls that dice and uh, we can see the output here. But uh, who cares about the details of the app for now? You know, there's like a custom admin dashboard, you know, users like Stripe coupon codes, invoices and settings and uh yeah so it's a full-blown SaaS application that we build you know that's why it has over four thousand lines of code and uh, we learn how to build it step by step in the course but you know here is like the end result of uh, the final code base and you can see here that i have a blueprints folder you know flask really doesn't care too much where you put the blueprints as long as it knows where to look for them but i like putting them into a blueprints folder because as you can see here in this snake eyes application that's the name of the app you know, there are other things here, such as like, you know, all the tests, uh, templates, you know, internationalization, like translation files. And then we also have blueprints and uh, yeah, they're pretty cool. So, you know, imagine that you weren't using blueprints, right? And you just had this whole entire large application that has all sorts of stuff about like contact forms and like Stripe billing and invoicing and like creating bets and like a whole admin dashboard and a whole like user registration uh, system like set up from scratch. You know, if you tried to put all of that like into uh, like one big ass folder, you know, it would be very, very, very hard to maintain that code base in the future. And uh, in my opinion, at least, you know, maintaining a code base is really, you know, that's your goal as a developer, right? It's like to develop something or develop an application that you can actually maintain. And like maintaining can mean a lot of things, right? But to me, it's not just like initially developing that application. So in a weird way, you know, developing the initial application, you know, that's sort of the easy part. Like it is challenging to create your application, but um, you know, if you're working on most applications full time, you know, unless you're building something like absolutely ginormous, uh, you know, it may take you three, four, five, maybe six months uh, of full-time work to ship an MVP. And if, you know, if you're spending like four months to build the application, but you're going to be running that application for four years, like where are you spending most of your time? You're spending most of your time maintaining that application, you know, adding features, going back into previously added uh, things to the application and fixing bugs, you know, also adding features to previous uh, things as well, you know, ensuring that you have good test coverage. Like there is so much that you're doing maintenance wise. And also, you know, you could be scaling out too in, in terms of adding new developers to the system. Like it's very, very, very hard for a new developer to go into a brand new code base that's not organized in a very nice way because then it's like very tricky for them to figure out where they need to go. So like th these are the types of problems that blueprints really, really help out. So if you take a look here at my sidebar, you know, I have a couple of blueprints here, six of them to be precise, and it just breaks up the code base like based on like what that uh, section of the code base does. So I have like an admin blueprint and one for betting. And like if, if you go inside of one of these folders here, well, in this case, the bet one has a couple of models. So it has its own individual models folder, you know, one for uh, storing the actual bets. And then there's one for uh, coin and dice. And if I go into the admin one, you know, that one just has a models.py file because there's really not too many mo models involved. But if you take a look here at a couple of these open blueprints, 
you know, there's uh, everything really about that section of the code base, like all contained into this one folder. So we have all of our admin forms are in this form.py, you know, the views as well. Like these are the URL endpoints that you would access in a browser. And like in the views.py, that is the source code to make all of that work. You know, and we also have templates here as well. So, you know, if you want to go in here and let's say that, you know, you want to modify something about the, the user blueprints, like maybe you need to go into, or let me just show this in the browser, right? This is, uh, I'm kind of just winging this video, going over some stuff. But like, you know, let's say that you wanted to, I don't know, inside this like settings update credentials page, like maybe you just want to change the wording of that. Uh, blueprints are really nice because you don't need to really dig through much at all. You just jump into your user bl blueprint and they're like, oh, okay, well, I'll just go to the templates for here for the uh, update credentials one. And then it's like, oh, okay, you know, I'll change whatever I need to change. And uh, then you are done. Like, you know exactly where to go in with laser focus, make your change, you know, save it, commit it, do whatever you need to do and be on your way. So it's really, really nice for uh, for maintaining stuff in the future, especially, I don't know if, if this is a problem with, with uh, something that you do, but it's certainly a problem for me. So it's like if I code something, uh, I pretty much understand how it works when I wrote it. But, you know, sometimes two months down the line, you know, you forget. You forget exactly where things are. You know, it, once your application grows to a certain size, it's very hard to keep the whole entire app in your head. And if it's really complicated code, sometimes you forget in two minutes instead of uh, two months. So just having a way to navigate your code base blueprints just for that feature alone is uh, super duper useful. So I also have this uh, app.py file. If you're a Flask developer, you're pretty familiar probably what this file does. Uh, technically, it could be named anything, but app.py is a pretty good, uh, I guess you can say, convention. So let me just make this uh, go away so we can take a look here. So, you know, as I said before, this video, seven minutes long now, you know, it's not going to be like an end-to-end -end tutorial on, on using blueprints. Uh, you know, all of that stuff is in my course. Also, some of this source code is open source on GitHub. So if you actually uh, do a search for like build a SaaS app with Flask GitHub, you will find a very, very watered down version of this code base, but it does use blueprints. And uh, we will actually look at that in a second. But uh, if you take a look here at this create app function, you know, here's how I just register each of these blueprints. So it's like basically a one-liner that you just drop into your uh, app factory for whatever blueprint that you want. And you're on your way. Like, you know, you can keep this function pretty much slimmed down and only uh, call out to things that, you know, that you want to call to. So specific blueprints, like, you know, error templates, middleware, like whatever you're doing in there. So, you know, it, it kind of keeps this function lightweight. So, this is, you know, a decently sized Flask, app, uh, Flask application showing how blueprints work. But, you know, what if you have a smaller Flask application, one with, you know, many less lines of code? So in that case, let me just go to uh, D source. Where is this GitHub? Build a SaaS app with Flask. Yep. And if I open Vim here, and uh, you know, this is the open source open source version of the code base. We can see here that, uh, you know, as opposed to the one that we just looked at. There's not many blueprints here, but there is one for the contact page, which is a simple, you know, text field where a user can enter in their email and like a text message and uh, it will email it to you, you know, basic contact form. And then there's like a page blueprint that has things like, uh, you know, terms of service, privacy, you know, the home page and stuff like that. So, you know, if you're dealing with just one blueprint, I would still use uh, the blueprints pattern because it is nice just to have that in one folder where you know where to look. Also, going back to the other code base here, if I uh, go to the admin blueprint and I go to the views, uh, another nice little benefit of blueprints, and I promise we're not going to go into the uh, details too much here, but uh, you can attach like URL prefixes to a specific blueprint. So in this case for the admin blueprint, you know, slash admin, is the URL prefix. So that means every single admin route that we go to will automatically be prefixed with uh, slash admin. So if I wanted to go and take a look here at uh, all the users here, and by the way, this is all fake data. So none of these email addresses are anyone's email address unless it just happened to be completely random. So they were all randomly generated. But you can see here that uh, slash admin slash users you know, there's also one for coupons and invoices and stuff like that. Like I don't have to go in there and hard code the slash admin to every single one of these. 
I just did it once for the entire blueprint for admin, and now every single route is automatically in there. And you can see here too, you can customize like where the templates are. Like if you don't want to put them inside the same folder as the blueprints, you could theoretically put them anywhere you want. But, um, you know, I really do like keeping everything all together because, you know, that's sort of the focus of, you know, that's sort of one of the main benefits of, of why I use them in the first place. So I hope you liked the video. That's kind of just like a high level overview of, you know, not so much like how blueprints work in detail, but you know, how they're actually applied in a real world Flask application. So uh, thanks a lot for watching. And, and if you like the video, please drop in a comment. Like, you know, do you want to see more Flask content on this channel? Let me know in the comments. Also, you know, I don't run any ads on this YouTube channel. So if you do want to show support besides just sharing this with your friends, you know, I do have a full blown course on building a SaaS application with Flask. And uh, I will leave a link to that in the description. But if you go to buildthesassapplflask.com, you know, you can learn about everything about the course here. You know, we cover many, many topics. You know, what is there now? 194 lessons because I do actually add updates quite often. So it is up to date. You can see here, like, you know, these bonus updates, I've done quite a lot. You know, the latest update was to Flask 1.1. So it is all up to date. But uh, with that said, thanks again for watching. And I will see you in the next video.